And tonight we have a clear sky. And I'm going to observe the planet Venus and Jupiter. Nirvana 7mm Yeah, I'm looking at the planet Jupiter. I have found the Venus. I looked at it. It's near getting there, near the gibbous phase. And the planet Jupiter, which is there. It's very clear with this Skull Watcher 120 ED. Nice, clear view. Now with the star guide uh, eight millimeter ED. Nice combination. And I can see Io which is very close to the limb of the planet Jupiter. At the same time I think I can see the shadow of it tiny clear. Is it drawn by a <laughs> pencil, sharp pencil tip? Uh, is visible beside it. It's amazing. This telescope at least of this combination. Oh, excellent. Oh, hallelujah. This is one of those exceptional knives that I can use the Nirvana 4mm, 82 degrees eyepiece. And I can see clearly the disc of the IO and uh, the. Oh, it's very tiny, of course, pin head. And also the shadow of it on the Jupiter. This is one of those very ex excellent, rare nights that the atmospheric conditions are so clear. We are ahead of a frost, so we expect tomorrow night to have some snow. So. This is very clear weather coming from the North Pole. It means it is a high pressure and atmospheric inversion in that sense. Uh, I can say this is the night that this 4mm Nirvana really shines, it comes to its best use. And uh, I'm really happy now that I have this now to have a look. If I didn't have it, I have to go for something like 7mm Nirvana and borrow it, which will give, give also a similar result. Clearly see tiny discs as a Ganymede, a uh, Callisto and uh, kind of bluish white of the Europa. Uh, of course, atmospheric dispersion causes this to a little bit sometimes elongated, but uh, you can see that it's not a star, it has a disk. It has a planetary, it is a planetary body. So after using these EDI pieces, I came to the conclusion, this is my conclusion. The Star uh, Guider ED eyepieces uh, are perfect eyepiece for using with refractors 60 degrees field of view nice and clarity excellent contrast excellent light scatter well controlled you don't see any halo around the bright objects like jupiter or venus and uh, perfect for ref uh, refractor telescopes but if you want to use it on a dobsonian no i don't think that is the perfect choice it's better to have a wider field of view angular wise 
so it's better to have something like 70 degrees or 80 degrees 100 degrees 110 degrees of course you can use it and I have not tried it myself but uh, um, with the refractor I feel that it's really good with the reflector I may eventually try it but at the moment I don't feel that the field of view uh, is big enough to avoid the nudging constant nudging of the tube of the Dobsonian oh what an excellent eyepiece is this uh, 26 millimeter meat plus hole. that's a lovely eyepiece sharp I'm looking at the M42 Great Orion Nebula. It's so beautiful. This is the Orion Nebula with the Mi 26mm Super Plus Olympus. The artifact to the left, what you see, is a reflection from the street light. Very close to this uh, nebula it was. And it's beautiful. The moon is now rising. Over my telescope. And it was very cold, so I just took a shot with the 26mm eyepiece from the moon. It was a full moon, so there was not much shadows. And then I went in because I didn't want to catch cold. It was a beautiful session. I really enjoyed it. All the eyepieces I use, I'm really enjoying them. I love them from the simplest one to the best, uh, you know, uh, technically advanced one, optically advanced one. And I finished this video by telling you how much I admire the Huawei P30 Pro mobile phone camera. This is the best camera I've ever seen. I don't know any other camera as good as this one. Uh, of course, many all these images you saw here were handheld, but the camera is excellent. You can see the Orion Nebula at the same Orion constellation at the same time. My telescope, very nice capture.